Are you looking to build a budget gaming PC, but you're not sure where to start or which parts to buy? In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to buy and build a $500 gaming PC, $750, and $1,000 gaming PC. We'll go over all the key components that you need for each budget to include the CPU, graphics card, SSDs, and all of that. And I'll also offer you some alternative parts if you can't find the same exact deals that I did. Whether you're brand new to the world of PC gaming, or if you're just upgrading your current setup, I got you covered in this video, so let's get started. After a quick word from today's sponsor. GVG Mall is not just the sponsor of today's video, but it's literally the exact website that I personally use to activate my Windows 10 on almost every single PC that I build here in the studio. To celebrate their mid-year promotion for 2022, they're actually bumping up our normal 18% off discount up to 25% off, and that gets Windows keys and everything else down to some really affordable prices. They also have other great products on other software like Office 2021 and even some game keys from platforms like Steam, Origin, and Uplay, and they even have console stuff too, like PSN and Xbox prepaid cards as well. Activating that Windows 10 on your computer is super simple to do. The entire process of buying and activating takes like five minutes total, so make sure you click that first link down in the description, and don't forget to use discount code ZTT18 for 25% off. Let's start with the $500 build and then we'll work our way up from here. And just as a reminder, we'll have links to everything, including the alternative parts down in the description. Starting with the CPU for this month's $500 build, I decided that our best option was the Intel i3-10100F. Now remember, for these parts lists, I'm only using brand new parts and you could certainly find better priced performance if you buy some used parts, but for brand new parts, we're a little bit limited on what we could buy, especially with only $500. We'll also just use the stock cooler that it comes with because again, we're really limited at this price point. This is still a really solid price and performance chip though, and I've used it in a ton of build guides before, but because this is $80 and because it'll pair with a cheap motherboard, this gets my selection for the budget build. And speaking of that motherboard, this is simply the absolute cheapest micro ATX board that I can find. This is the ASRock H510M-HVS, and this definitely does not have all the bells and whistles. Now, chances are, if you're actually hunting for only a $500 brand new gaming PC, you're probably not gonna care about all the extra details in the motherboard. We're extremely limited by the price point here and we just don't have a lot of wiggle room. Now for RAM though, we have the YOLO 2x8 gigabyte DDR4 kit that's clocked at 3200 megahertz. Feel free to go with whatever 2x8 gigabyte 3200 or more all black kit that you can find a really good deal on. Moving on, we get to the SSD and I'm actually pretty pumped about this deal that's been going on for about a week now. This is the 500 gigabyte NeTac NVMe drive and it's been sitting on Amazon for just $25. This drive isn't gonna be setting any speed records or anything, but from what I can tell, people are getting some pretty decent speed tests. It has high reviews and for $25, yeah, it's gonna be hard to complain about. I actually just bought 10 of them, so we're gonna be doing some testing ourselves and you're gonna be seeing them in a lot of upcoming YouTube videos. Make sure you stay subscribed to the channel for that. Moving on here though, next up we get to the power supply and here I went with the XBG Pylon 450 watt for $50. And honestly, this isn't that great of a deal, but easily the best option that I could find when making this video. Remember to consult your PSU tier list whenever you're building your PC. You'll probably want a tier C or tier B model for a budget $500 build. But even though this one is listed as tier C, this is one of the better tier C models, so you just can't go wrong with it. After that, we have the graphics card, and honestly, this is what gets me excited about budget PC building going into 2023. This is the ASRock Challenger D RX 6600, and I just absolutely love seeing the RX 6600 starting to become a possibility in a $500 brand new gaming PC. Now, this Challenger D model is definitely nothing to write home about, and you can definitely find 6600s for under $200 if you buy used, but either way, for a $500 brand new system, this is some serious price to performance. The i3-10100F and 6600 is a nasty combo for some 1080p gaming action, and you'll be able to play literally any game you throw at it going into 2023, at least in 1080p. And finally, to wrap up this build, everything will be housed inside the Thermaltake Versa H18, and I'm gonna go with this option because it's been on sale for Newegg for just $38 for several days now. This is screaming value for less than 40 bucks. It has a PSU cutout so you can do some vinyl action, enough airflow up at the front, it's got a smaller micro ATX size footprint, a full tempered glass side panel, and it comes with with one fan right off the bat. Now, obviously this is still just a budget case and it's not ultra optimized or anything like that, but this is a pretty good option to go with and one that I've used before, so I recommend it for budget builds. If you're trying to copy this at home and you want something else or don't see this deal, one of the best ways to finding case deals is to go on Newegg, drill down to computer cases, select which form factor you want, and then simply sort by the lowest price first. For whatever reason, the PC Part Picker website doesn't display anywhere close to all of these options, and there's always decent budget deals to go with under 50 bucks, 
So go with whichever one you think is best. So here's what the final parts list is looking like. And as you can see, we did go just a tad bit over our $500 budget, but honestly, there's like nowhere to really cut the budget without dropping a significant amount of performance. Excuses, excuses. How am I supposed to trust you when all you give me are excuses? Now, realistically, most people aren't gonna have an ultra tight, only $500 budget. And I would recommend going above your budget for a build like this. But if you absolutely can't go a dollar over $500, then you're probably gonna have to cut money from your GPU and get something like the 6500 XT, but you're gonna lose a lot of performance by doing that. I would personally recommend staying here at the 6600 and going a tad over budget. And always remember that it's super simple to find 6600s used for less than $200, which can get you closer to a $500 total bill price as well. But for our next build, we have a little bit more room to play with for $750. And here's exactly what I recommend buying. Almost every part is getting an upgrade compared to our $500 build. The only thing that's staying the same is the RAM kit, which again is the YOLO 2x8 gigabyte kit clocked at 3200 megahertz. For our CPU, that's getting a nice bump up to the Ryzen 5 5600. This gives us more cores and more threads. And honestly, this is just one of the best options to go with for mid-range builds right now. We'll also use the stock Wraith cooler, which will be perfectly fine. And feel free to paint it like I do in a ton of my builds. You can make this super simple one color like I do, or feel free to full send it with Picasso mode if you're able to. Pairing with the CPU, we have the Asus Prime A520M-A. This motherboard certainly isn't anything special, and I'm just using the same mindset that I have with the previous motherboard. This is just the cheapest micro ATX option available right now that also has four RAM slots. Now, some people at $750 may want a better motherboard. There's definitely some useful features that you can target such as built-in Wi-Fi, a BIOS flashback button, or better VRMs for overclocking. But for me personally, for these type of budget builds, I personally rather save money on the motherboard. That way I can spend more money on the other components. By doing that, it allows us to upgrade our SSD to one like this, the Patriot P310. And this is actually actually the one terabyte model, which you love to see. We also have room in the budget to upgrade the GPU, of course. And this here is the XFX Swift 210 RX 6650 XT, which is a significant bump up from the RX 6600. And I'm not sure why, but these 6650 XTs have been going on way better sales than 6600 XTs lately. Someone let me know down in the comment section if you're aware of that. But a 6650 XT and a $750 build is amazing price and performance. And this XFX model also looks pretty clean as well. Continuing along with our upgrades for our power supply, we need a little bit more wattage. So this is the Thermaltake BM2 550 watt. This isn't the best deal at $65, but it was the best that I could find at the time of making this video, but it shouldn't be too hard to beat. Again, remember to consult your tier list and just get any tier C or tier B model that you find a good deal on. Next up, we have some cable extensions. And in this build, I'm going with the easy DIY all black ones. And finally, for the case, there's a really solid deal right now on the Thermaltake V150 TG ARGB for just $67. Now, I haven't used this case personally, but it looks like a really good deal. And I I've heard good things about it. Just has a super clean design. It comes with three pre-installed RGB fans. And at this price point, it competes with my favorite budget case, the Montec Air 100, which you know, of course, is always an option to go with as well, if it's in stock. Now here's what the final parts this is looking like. And again, we just went slightly over the $750 mark, but with some decent deals, you could easily find this for less than $750 with some patience. That PSU price isn't that great, like I just said. And the Ryzen 5 5600 also sometimes goes on some nice sales, which will help as well. And real quickly before moving on, if you just need some more help or you're trying to hang out more with me or some other like-minded PC builders and PC flippers, then click that join button down below to become an exclusive today. Being a YouTube member, aka exclusive, has some serious benefits to include joining the lock section of our Discord server, access to the transactional channel where I post everything that I'm personally buying and selling, priority access to the website build restocks, and you'll even get to participate in the monthly exclusive Q&A video. Again, just click that join button down below. And finally, let's move on to our $1,000 dollar build and we have a lot more wiggle room to play with here and honestly I really want to build this one in person for myself. We're actually not using any of the same parts from the $750 build as everything got an upgrade all except those easy DIY extensions which you know we still had to include. Starting with the CPU we have the Intel i5-12600K and we all know by now how beastly of a chip this is. With six performance cores, four efficiency cores, and 16 total threads this can be paired with virtually any GPU that you throw at it and it's still one of the best options to go with for a mid-range to high-end gaming PC. For cooling, we'll need something a bit better than the stock cooler this time. And here I have the Thermaltake UX200 ARGB because this performs great for around 30 bucks and it'll also look really nice with our RGB color scheme. For the motherboard, we have the MSI Pro B660M. This is the DDR4 version, which allows us to save a good amount of money on our total build cost. And I really wouldn't consider DDR5 just yet for a $1,000 PC. Speaking of which, this is the PNY XLR8 Gaming Epic RGB RAM kit. And this is two by eight gigabytes clocked at 3200 megahertz. Now there's a ton of options 
options to go with here. I just went with this one because I wanted an all black kit that's also rocking some extra RGB bling, but you can go with the T-Force Delta RGB kit or the YOLO RGB kit, which often goes on sale as well. For storage, we're seeing a bit of an upgrade from our $750 build as well. This is the Crucial P3 one terabyte NVMe Gen 3 drive, and this is simply a bit faster and only costs a few bucks more at $60. Next up, we have the power supply, and this got a bump up as well. This is the Asus Tough Gaming 650 watt unit, and this is 80 plus bronze certified and also tier B, which is what I would recommend for a $1,000 build. Probably don't want to go with a tier C in a higher end build like this. Now, the reason we went with the higher end PSU is because of a higher end GPU. And here we have the MSI Mech 2X OC RX 6700 XT. And this is a monster graphics card capable of 1440p gaming at a pretty decent price. There's just honestly nothing on the market right now competing in this $360-ish dollar price range. That's what RTX 3060s are still priced at, which perform way worse. And these 6700 XTs just perform very, very well for the money. And they often be RTX 3060 Ti's as well. Now there is a slight chance that you could fit a 6750 XT in a $1,000 build. I actually just did that with a used 6750 XT in my latest $1,000 build guide, which you can check out in the upper right hand corner. But for most people, especially PC building beginners, a 6700 XT would probably be your goal for this price range. And finally, housing all of these components is the Fractal Design Pop Air. And sorry for using this case over and over again, but I just really like it and I recommend it all the time. And speaking of recommending it, I actually have my own personal consulting services. I'm not like paying anyone to do it. It's actually me building the parts list. So if you ever need a custom parts list tailored to exactly how you want it, then click that link that's also down in the description. But with that being said, here's the parts list for a $1,000 build. And honestly, this one is looking super fresh and can be easily repeated if you're trying to follow this at home. The three RGB fans in the Pop Mini air case combined with the RGB CPU cooler and RGB RAM sticks will just look amazing. And even the GPU is pretty aesthetic. So this would all look certified clean AF together. Now, hopefully this helped you if you're in the planning stages of building a budget gaming PC or a mid-range gaming PC. And if you just want to see me do another option, but physically in person, then feel free to click the video that's on the screen now.